Let's look at an example for frames and machines. In this particular example, we're going to be looking at a frame and it is described by this ABCD system that is shown on the screen. At A, we have a fixed support. At B, we have a pin between elements AB and elements BD. At C, we have a roller. And between C and D, we have a distributed force of 1.5 kips per foot. Each of those distances between, between A and B, B and C, and C and D are 10 feet each. All right, so as I said before, one of the key aspects of this is to be able to break my structure into different elements and look at the free body diagrams of those elements. I want you to realize something that is interesting from this problem. At A, I expect to have three reaction forces. At C, I ex I'm expected to have one reaction force. So as a total for the system, we have four reaction forces. And as we discussed before, when we have four reaction forces, this might be a little bit too many to be able to solve with a single free body diagram. So what we're gonna learn in this example is that in some particular cases, we might be able to find more than four, uh, more than three reaction forces when we break down the system. Now, that doesn't always work, but in some cases, like in cases of frames, sometimes it does work. We're going to see some more advanced techniques to do the analysis of the structures in other classes. All right, let me turn my camera off. And we're going to start doing, we're going to start doing the free body diagrams of different elements. So let's just start with that element AB. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to start doing free body diagrams and then I'm gonna do my equations of equilibrium as I see what free body diagrams I can do. So my free body diagram of AB, I'm gonna put it here on the right hand side. And it's gonna look something like this. It's gonna be, A is gonna be somewhere over here. And I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger than what is shown on the left but and then B's over here. And we're gonna have at A, we're gonna have a reaction force going vertically. It's called, called, it's called that AY, AX. We also have a moment, let's call that my moment MA. All of those three forces are unknown, right? And B, we're going to have two forces. We're gonna have a force uh, called Bx, another force that is called By. The distance between these two is 10 feet. Uh, my x-axis, uh, my y-axis, and I think that's that's my free body diagram. I don't think I have any other information. I don't have any known forces, right? Okay, very good. Now, I can do my free body diagram of B. That's going to be that joint uh, that I have um, right there. So if I do my free body diagram of B, that's gonna be a particle, right? I'm gonna put here, this is gonna be my B. And I'm gonna have the force, the reaction forces to the one that I just draw, right? So my BX is going to go in this direction. I'm going to draw them in the opposite direction. Because these are like action and reaction, right? So go in the opposite dire direction. And coming from the other element, from element BD, I'm going to have two more forces, right? And the only option or the only possibility for this to be in equilibrium is that those two are going to be equal and opposite direction, right? So I'm going to have my uh, x-axis over here. Let's put my xy over here just to determine the direction of my axis. That's all. This also has four unknowns. I don't have any known quantities, so I, I cannot do much with this free body diagram either. Finally, let's look at that element BD. So I'm going to do my free body diagram of BD. 
And for that particular free body diagram, I'm going to see something like this. And I'm going to try to make it maybe a little bit larger than what is shown in the figure, just for the purpose of not crowding that free body diagram. At B, um, I'm going to see the reaction forces from the pin. So in that case, I'm going to see something going like this. By and something going like this. Bx. Notice that those are also in the opposite direction of the free body diagram of AB. That makes sense, right? It's like action and reaction again. Uh, it the, the direction of those forces are important because as we put all of this together, the sum of all the internal forces should be equal to zero, right? And if we don't put them in the right direction, we're gonna we're going to have the incorrect sign of the forces as we move from free body diagram to free body diagram. So it's important to have the direction of those free body diagrams correctly. All right, at C, I'm going to have, let's see, somewhere over here, I'm gonna have this, let's call that CY for a force. And then I'm going to have my distributed force and I'm gonna go I'm gonna ahead and do a additional step. Um, I want to put a uh, the equivalent point load, right? So I'm going to go ahead and put my equivalent point load right here. And that's going to be right in the middle of that distributed force. That means that the distance uh, between this force and the end is going to be five feet. The magnitude is the area of that distributed force, so that's 1.5 kip per foot times 10 feet, that gives me 15 kip. The distance between BY and CY is 10 feet. And then the distance between CY and that equivalent point load is also going to be 5 feet. Have my x-axis, have my y-axis, uh, let's see, how many unknown forces do I have? Well, I have three unknown forces, Bx, By, and Cy, because I know that equivalent point load of 15 kip, and I know the location of that force. So I can actually start with this free body diagram of BD and write some equations of equilibrium. Okay, so I'm going to start here saying equations of equilibrium. Or BD. That's, that's my, my, my next step. All right, let's do some of the forces in X are equal to zero. The only force in the X direction is BX. So now we're starting to find some unknowns. BX is equal to zero, right? Very nice. All right, we can also do uh, some of the moments about B. Are equal to zero. So that will be my CY will be will, will create a positive moment about B. Uh, by the way, this is B. This is C. And um, that will be a positive 10 CY, right? 10 is the perpendicular distance and CY is the force. Now my 15 kip will create a negative moment and the distance is 15 so it will be 15 times 15 so negative negative 15 times 15 and i believe those are the only two forces that i have so from here i can find that cy is going to be equal to 15 times 15 over 10 and that gives me that cy is going to be equal to 22.5 kip. Okay, another piece of the puzzle, that is CY. Finally, I can do some of the forces in Y equal to 
equal to zero. And let's see, so I have minus by plus cy minus 15. Okay, so minus by plus cy, but we already find, found that that is 22.5 kips minus 15, good. So from here we can find uh, by is going to be equal to zero. Oh, that's interesting. Really? No, no, no. Uh, Seven point five kips. There you go. Seven point five kips. Apologies, not equal to zero. My notes wrong. Okay. All right. Very good. So we found the magnitude of CY, BX, and BY using the free body diagram of BD. That means that we already know the forces applied to that uh, uh, join at B, right? The pin at B. And we can also find some information of that free body diagram of AB. We know BX and BY. So now we can look at the, we can formulate the equations for AB and find the reaction forces AX, AY, and MA. All right, I'm gonna do that here at the bottom. So I'm gonna say equations of equilibrium for BD. Okay, very good. All uh, right, so what do we have? Well, we can start by looking, let's look over here. Let's do the sum of the moments about A. How about that? Sum of the moments about A. We're gonna have MA, right? Uh, BX does not produce any moments about A, AX and AY do not produce any moments about A, so we're going to only have MA and 10BY. That will be both of them positive as drawn in that free body diagram. So, some of the moments about A is going to be equal to zero because we are in equilibrium, that is MA plus 10 BY. So we know that MA will be equal to 10 BY and BY we found out before that was 7.5 kips. So that will be equal to minus 75 kip foot. All right. Another of our reaction forces right here. All right, the next one that we can do is some of the forces in X. And let's look at the free body diagram. We have AX plus BX equal to zero. Uh, and A and BX is equal to zero, therefore AX is going to be equal to zero, right? So this is AX plus BX. So I just put it here on the side. AX will be equal to zero. Very good. Finally, we have our sum of the forces in Y equal to zero. And from those sum of the forces in Y, we have AY, uh, we have BY, that's it, nothing else. All right, so that's going to be both of them positive. So AY plus BY equal to zero. Uh, therefore, my since we are, already know that my BY is 7.5 kips, we have that our AY is going to be minus 7.5 kips. Very good. So. In a nutshell, what we've done in this particular problem is we were able to take the system and break it down into the different components. We wrote down or we uh, were able 